In reaction to a media interview done by President Muhammad Buhari and the Democracy Day speech he gave afterwards, uh, the pan Yoruba social political organization, Afeni Ferris, said his comments and positions were short of expectations, exposing his administration as one bent on taking steps that are not in the best interest of most Nigerians. Uh, to the pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, uh, the president's speech was hollow and lacked substance, saying that it, either, it is either that he's not in touch with reality or taking Nigerians for granted. Also speaking, the Christian Association of Nigeria's vice chairman, Northern Region, Reverend John Hayab, said that a good speech without concrete actions will not end in security, sufferings and dwindling Nigerian uh, national cohesion and integration in the land. So joining us to have this conversation is Ken Robinson. He's the National Publicity Secretary of Pandem. We also have joining us um, Alester Wilcox. He is a political analyst and an accountant. And of course, we're being joined on telephone by Mr. Ebisheni um, Shola. Uh, he's the Secretary General of Afeni Ferry. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, it's nice to be here again. Good evening, Nigeria. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure having me too. Nice seeing uh, Mr. Right. Uh, my, my, good, my, my good friend. I used to like him. All right, and let's I go straight to the conversation. Um, let me start with um, Pandev. Um, the, you're saying that, the, that Mr. President's message was hollow. It was short of expectations. Um, and it's either he's unaware of what's happening with Nigerians or he's taking the country for granted. What aspects of the president's speech or message on, uh, on that day? Because he seemed, for most of us who are journalists who are watching from this side of the aisle, it seemed more like a scorecard uh, that Mr. President put out. But what part of the message made you think that it was hollow and that Nigerians were being taken for granted? Mr. Ken. It, it, was, it was a poor scorecard. You know, it's self-evaluation and... Uh, I think that Mr. President should be sincere with himself and be fair to Nigerians in, 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 uh, when he speaks to us. It, it, the, the speech on Democracy Day and the two other interviews with Daniel Trump television houses before that day We are void of words, shooting words, to dial tension at a time like this in Nigeria. The country is collapsing under Mr. President's watch, and very rightly, the last three years in particular, and counting, could be could, could put down history as the darkest period of our nation's history. But anytime Mr. President speaks to us, he, he, he speaks in contradictory manner, as if we are not aware of, of what's going on in the country, or not just being careless, or perhaps, as, as we said earlier, taking fellow Nigerians for granted. Mr. President talked about a, a vision, but, and we say it's not just a vision, it's an a, hallucination. Of, of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. That's a contradiction to what is going on in the country. And that's what we just want to hear this time. Nigerians are scared of living. Living itself is a problem in Nigeria right now. People are being killed every day. Kidnapping in the Northeast, I mean, in the Northwest is, is a game now. Every day, unfettedly, on, at will, when they like, where they like, they strike. Take school children, university students, innocent women. And then ask for ask for ransom. People obnob with bandits, they negotiate with terrorists, but, but they will go onto the streets to manhandle peace, peaceful demonstrators, people protesting for against poor governance, against against poor leadership. And then Mr. President will, when he speaks, particularly on democracy, like will be telling know. us about uh, the, the things he's planning to do. Uh, we are working and we are addressing, and these things will, will soon come to an end. Let, let us repeat this that the greatest threat to corporate existence of Nigeria is the way and manner the present administration, this presidency, is conducting at the affairs of the nation. And it is high time that Nigerians should tell Mr. President the truth, that things cannot continue this way in the best interest of Nigeria. Uh, let me go to Shala. Um, Afeni Ferrer has said that the president's speech was short of expectations and he exposed his administration's uh, the, the, the fact that his administration is bent on taking steps that are not in the best interest of Nigerians, according to Afeni Ferre, and that uh, he also said that it shows that many Nigerians or most Nigerians uh, are not necessarily um, do not necessarily um, 
are, that are not, they are not a priority to Mr. President. He said something more like uh, they're taking certain parts of the country for granted. So um, can you tell me what Afenifera's stance is right now and what their grouse is with Mr. President's speech? Because Pandev has said that uh, the president is not being realistic. Uh, on the side of Afenifera, what is your grouse? Let me come to you, Alesta. Um, the president said that Nigeria is better off now than it was in 2015. Uh, he went on to say that... Say that um, a lot of things have that Nigeria is enjoying now. The country did not enjoy it in 2015. Now, Fenifere begged to differ and disagree on that particular one. But help us break down the things, because I know that um, you obviously uh, differ on the stands of Fenifere and Panda. But help us to break down what things make us seem better off now than we were in 2015. Do you have any idea? Thank you very much. I'm not a government spokesman, so I, it, it, I, I will only analyze the president's speech. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Robinson, or let me say Chief Robinson. Uh, the absence of uh, battle opposition uh, is being fueled by, the, by my brother Robinson and uh, Mr. O'Shea. I don't know what, he, I can't remember his name now. Because I think Pandev and our friend the ferry, uh, the, the other, the, 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 the other Fendi Ferry, renewal group, is now the very opposition, opposition we have in the country. Well, the main opposition party, the PDP, they are nowhere and they, they can't find their ass together. So it's gratifying that uh, Pandev and um, Fendi Ferry is filling in that gap. And you don't expect anything different from an opposition other than to have a critical analysis and find fault in what, uh, in what they are against. So it's so 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 it's a, it's a welcome uh, situation. It's understandable, and of course, they are doing a good job. Alesta, a good what job are the things that the you think, as a Nigerian, are the things that make us as a country better off now than we were in 2015? If you know any, I said. Did you, did you hear what I said? I'm not a government spokesman. I'm not a government spokesman. I said, as a Nigerian, what do you think? Uh, we, how, oh, what are the Nigeria. things you think are better now than w they were in 2015? What makes you? What, what are the things that you think oh. the president was referring to? Oh, okay. If we, look, if I have to take it from my own perspective, um, the president talked about various aspects of life, talked about infrastructure development, and of course, certainly, except even to the blind you will know that today we have better infrastructure in terms of road networks in Nigeria than we were in 2015. As of today, you have, better, you, I mean, you have a better uh, agricultural environment. Today, agriculture is taking a very, very top shot. A financial, a financial system that is all-inclusive, and if you want to play, you can play into it. You have less of uh, uh, guagantum corruption in the, in the system. So... There are quite a number of things. I know, when, I know my brothers will talk about, oh, you hear of insecurity every day, you hear of killing every day. Oh, maybe we'll forget, in the, in, we, maybe we'll forget so recently that as from 2003 up to 2009, before, up to 2007, before the amnesty program in the South-South, I mean, what we are having, what we are to, waiting today in the Northwest, it was, it was like a child's play. And even as of today, it's not even a clear case. My brother knows that. So... Maybe sometimes we will forget our past and we, we hammer on one thing that has been become the news that is talking about insecurity. But if you look at the entire gamut of governance, you have a more responsible governance. Forget about the, what the opposition will, will, will always tell you. They will always tell you things are not, of course, that's the work of the opposition. So long as you're in the opposition, you will always find fault. But I can tell you that today, you have a more quality, good road networks. Today, uh, 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 railway structures, uh, infrastructures have been I mean, I mean, are coming up every day. And you see what has happened in Lagos the other day. You see what's happening in the master. So, the, I mean, even with any less, this government is struggling hard to deliver. Look, it has not been an easy journey for them. And anybody okay. who is thinking otherwise, who, I mean, should, should know that she's a Nigerian and should know what is reality. Okay. So I'm not begrudging the opposition. I'm not begrudging Pandev. I'm not begrudging a friend of Perry. They are, they are in opposition with, the, with this government. So they will always find opposite, opposite views 
as to whatever it is. But the president has laid out his forecast. All right. And it is there for everybody to see. Uh, if you disagree okay, on it, I want us to. I, I want to. Alesta, I'm gonna. I'm gonna come back to you. Let me quickly go back to Shala, um, the Fenny Fair uh, gentleman, uh, Mr. Mr. Bisheni. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm. I'm struggling. I'm struggling to hear you. I told you I'm in the car. Well, yes. So let me let me pose a question to you. So uh, Alesta is saying that the government has done so much. Um, there's been the government under President Buhari is more responsible. He's talked about infrastructural growth. He's talked about agriculture being the top tier thing that this government has accomplished. Uh, he's also put a caveat that he knows that you will respond that insecurity is rife, but that this government obviously is better. Uh, the country is better off now than in 2015. But I know that Afeni Ferre begged to differ on that. Can you come in there, please? Well, thank you very much. Let me, first of all, make certain clarifications. Afani Fari is a social political organization. And uh, we act in tandem with some other organizations which you mentioned, like Pandev, like uh, Hanizi Indigo, and the Middle Bed Forum. We are not a political party. Therefore, we are not in the business of uh, opposing governments only or merely for the purpose of uh, achieving political power. Therefore, we are in a better position to say things as they are. Well, the gentleman trying to preempt us by saying that he knew we were going to talk about uh, insecurity. The purpose of the state and even government, the fundamental basis for having a government is the security of life and property. A government that is not able to guarantee the security of life and property is not a government properly so-called. With respect to the present administration, yes, I've heard some of the uh, things he mentioned. There is, it's, not, it's not our business to start contesting that with him because we know if he is a Nigerian, I, I, I only know whether he's a Nigerian or not, if he is a Nigerian, he will know that all those things he mentioned fail into insignificance in the face of the insecurity of life and property in the, in the, I mean, in the Nigerian society. When this administration came on board, the administration was talking, in fact, every Nigerian was convinced that, oh, <coughs> a Buhari will do better than a Jonathan because he's an army general, he has been the head of state before, and he comes from the northern part of the country where the issue of Boko Haram then was. And that as soon as it comes, within a short time, you will be able to put that behind us. Buhari came to power on three basic programs. He spoke about security, about uh, improving the economy, and about putting an end to corruption or whatever it is. As it is today, the question I've asked the gentleman is that all these three issues could form the basis of Buhari's coming to power. Which of them will you say he has actually tried? Is it, is it in terms of what was the, the exchange rate of the, of, the, of the Naira to the dollar by the time he came and what it is now? What, or, or will it be in terms of even the cost of, uh, of uh, fueling? What is it that you want to say about the uh, Buhari administration in terms of the in terms of the economy. The things you have mentioned are little things that anybody can do. Yes, maybe in Lagos he completed the, the, the rail system that he inherited from the previous administration. And he's able to do one or two things that any, anybody can do in government. But we are talking of fundamental things. Okay. Nigerian, look, Nigerians today, are they better? Because you asked him that question. 
Are Nigerians today better than they were in 2015 when Buhari came? The answer is no. Okay. Did, you, did you listen to your president okay. when he was addressing the world? He wasn't addressing the nation. When, you give, when, when, when the president is, is uh, granting an interview to an international audience through a medium like Arise Television, Mr. Bisseni, the president I, I, was the president was talking to the Mr. whole world. Mr. Bisseni, were we you need... proud that that was the president of Nigeria? Well, Mr. Bisseni, I, I, I'm going to have to, you know, um, tell you to hold that thought because we need to wrap up. So I'm going to go, go back to Ken Robinson. Ken, Mr. Ken Robinson, I saw that you were disagreeing with um, Alastair and some of the things that he said. Quickly, if you were in the president's shoes, because it seems like the president has his plate full and there's so much to, you know, hold and pull from different directions. What would you rather do in a sentence because we're out of time? Yes, let, let, me, let me just quickly, um, Sola has uh, reacted, clarified some position, but let me quickly say that Pandev is not playing opposition to the presidency. Pandev is, is a mixture of uh, various parties. We have APC members in Pandev, we have PDP members in Pandev, we have other political party members in Pandev. Pandev comprises ethnic nationalities in the Niger Delta. Our interests is the interest of the Niger Delta people, the shared interest of the Niger Delta people, and that's what we're doing. Okay. Let, let me um, remind Alex. We don't have time. Us. Okay, sorry, briefly. On the 1st of November 2016, about 100 persons from the Niger Delta paid a visit to Mr. President, and we submitted to him what we call the 15 point agenda. Today, this is uh, 2021. It is only two or one and a half of those items that have been uh, implemented by Mr. President. That is, that is a box score. That is two over 16. Okay. That is a success for us in the Niger Delta. The East-West Road is, is no inch of construction has been added to it in we, President Buhari's six years. We have to go. We so, have so, to go. So Mr. President needs to open up the system. He needs to allow, as okay. he said, he cannot use the 95% the way he treats the 5%, but that's not the language of the president. He needs to change his type. It should be broad-minded. It should be. It should be inclusive. Nigeria belongs to all of us. No right. section owns this country more than the rest of us. We we need to go. Uh, and I, I I need quickly, Alastair. One in one sentence. We need you to put in the last word, please. Yes, I'm very proud of Mr. President. I remain proud of Mr. President. I will keep being proud of Mr. President. That is talking of President Muhammadu Buhari in all his actions and inactions. And I want to thank my brother Robinson uh, for saying at least he has done two. If other administration has done one of all of those 16 items, maybe we'll not be here. And I think our, our brother was there, was, our own brother was there, and uh, for, six, for six years, he did not even half. But okay. somebody came and did one and half or two. So it's a, it's a plus. That, that, we need to go. We need to go, gentlemen. We need to go. I wish we had more time to have this conversation, but time is not our friend. Ken Robinson is of Pandef, and of course, um, Shola Ebicheni is of Afenifera, and Alastair Wilcox it's a political analyst and an accountant. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We have to go. Um, and that's it on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. Have a good evening.